All right, boys and girls, we're going to take some notes today in our math journal. You should have four composition books at home. You can pick any one that you want, totally up to you. I picked the color blue. I like to associate blue with math. And you're going to write your name on the outside of it. And you're going to write math journal. So you should be doing this along with me as I am doing it on the video. And if I go too fast, you can pause the video. So we're going to set this up since this is the first time we've ever taken notes. So it's going to take a little bit longer than when we normally take notes. Um, <clears throat> this is the title of our, of our book. It's, uh, Miss, it's Math Journal by Miss Bridges. So I like to also go over parts of a book. So if you open up a normal book, the very first page that you see, it has basically the same thing that the title does. It has the same thing that the cover does. It's called the title page. So it has the title of the book and the author again. So you're going to write math journal again. You can write it big or small, totally up to you. If you can write in fancy um, print, you can do that. I'm not that creative, math journal. Bye, my pencil keeps breaking. Miss Bridges. And usually on a cover or on a title page, there is some sort of picture. Miss Bridges is not an artist, so I'm going to go simple, and this is my ruler. Um, you can also do like some math symbols, plus sign, minus sign. Wow, this pencil's bad. Division sign, multiplication sign. So we are just um, making a title page. Then if you go to the back of that page, the back of that page, the back of a title page is always the copyright page. This isn't necessary for your journal, but Miss Bridges always likes to put it in there because it's something cute and fun to do. So the copyright page usually gives a uh, pub publisher a date, and I think it gives the address of the publisher. Uh, what we're going to do is the date, the copyright date, is going to be 2020, since that's the year that we're in. If you want to put 2020 to 2021, because you will continue this all year long, you can. Oops. 2021. Um, and then the publishing company. You can make up a funny name. You can use your own name in the publishing company. You can use the school's name in the publishing company. I'm going to use Bearcat Press. Bear Cat Press. All right, so the next part of a book, a lot of kids get this part confused. They think that the next part is the index, but the index actually comes at the end of the book, and we're not going to create an index for our math journal, but we are going to create a table of contents. And since we will take lots of notes in this math journal, we're actually going to do quite a few pages that say table of contents. Table of contents. So that was the first page I wrote table of contents. Here's my copyright page. There's my table of contents. I'm going to go to the back of that page that says table of contents and I'm going to write it again. Table of contents. And we're going to do it two more times. Table of contents. And one last time on the back of that page. Make sure that you flip the page over correctly so you don't get two pages stuck together. Table of contents. Now, we should have enough table of contents pages to last us the whole year. So now we are going to go back to that first table of contents page, the very first one that we did, and we're going to put our first entry into our table of contents. So the very first entry is going to be common 
math, words, and symbols. And then a real table of contents usually has a bunch of dots, dot, 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 and that's going to be on page one. Our table of contents pages don't count in the numbers when you're numbering a page. Um, they're, they're numbered separately, so we're not numbering those at all. But our first page that we're going to put is common math words and symbols, and that's going to be on page one. So now that we have our first entry, you're going to pass all your table of contents. There's my last table of contents page. And this page right here is going to be page one. I don't care if you put the number at the top, at the bottom, in the middle, on the right, on the left. That's totally up to you, but the page number does need to go on every page. I like to put mine in the bottom, in the middle. That's just my specific preference. So I'm going to put page one down here. I see y'all can't see that. Okay, so I put page one at the bottom of my page. Um, these journals in the past have been major test grades. So as long as you do them and you keep up with them, it's a pretty easy 100. I'm not 100% sure that we're doing it that way this year, but um, in case we do, you need to start off making sure that you uh, put them in the right order and you have everything that I have on mine. So page one, don't care where it is as long as it's on there somewhere. And finally, you're going to take page one. This was in the pack of paper that you picked up and you need to find it. It should be um, with all your other notes that you have. And you're gonna glue it down onto page one. So I have some glue here. Usually best if you put a square all the way around it. And then a big X in the middle. And ta-da. Now, sometimes when we do notes, um, the notes are just glued down like this. Sometimes you'll have to handwrite notes and sometimes uh, the notes will have like fill in the blanks and we'll fill them in together. So there are a couple of changes that I want to make onto this journal page. The first one is right here, this word shared. They have a subtraction. Shared really is not a subtraction word. You need to cross off the word shared there just like I did. And you need to put division, uh, put it in the division box. So I'm going to squeeze in down here the word shared. Whenever you're sharing something, like if you have a candy bar and you share it with three people, where you're dividing the candy bar. Um, if you have a pizza and you're sharing it with six people, we are dividing that pizza. So that's why we want to make sure that we put shared on the division sign. And then there's one more thing that I want to add, and we will probably add to this all year long. That's why we put it on page one, so it'll be easy to find. So I added how many more here. Um, the video kind of messed up, so this is a second clip that I'm putting together. So you're going to add the words how many more to your subtraction sign, and you're going to highlight it. This is a common error with students. They think when they read the words how many more that it means to add because they see this more word. But more does, how many more does not mean to add. Let me give you an example. If Miss Bridges had 15 M&Ms and you had 10 M&Ms, how many more M&Ms does Miss Bridges have? Well, you would take my M&Ms 15, subtract your M&Ms 10, to see that I had five more M&Ms. So the words, how many more, how much more, um, that always means to subtract. So make sure that you put it there and if you have a highlighter, highlight it so that when you're studying and looking over these common words and phrases that uh, you pay special attention to that one. Uh, if you have any questions about today's math notes, please email me.